this is Joanna Marie Manyo. You can call me Glam Yum. And uh, narito ako upang talakayin ang pagsusuri ng impormasyon gamit ang ICT. Handa na ba ang lahat na makinig? Tara na! Ngunit bago ang lahat, kilalanin muna natin kung ano nga ba yung ICT. Ang ICT or Information and Communication Technologies ay isang kombinasyon ng teknolohiya ng impormasyon at mga gawain ng tao na sumusuporta sa mga operasyon o pagpapaandar, pamamahala at paggawa ng kapasyahan. Sa malawakang diwa, ang katagang sistema ng impormasyon ay kadalasang ginagamit upang tumukoy sa interaksyon sa pagitan ng mga tao mga proseso, dato at teknolohiya. Ang pagsusuri ng impormasyon gamit ang ICT. Ngayon, tuusin ang mga sumusunod sa loob ng dalawang minuto gamit ang papel at panulat. Kaya niyo ba? Siyempre, hindi. Sapagkat hindi natin kayang sagutan ng, ng mano-mano ang ganitong kalaking numero. Ngayon, may mga app na makakatulong sa atin upang mabilis ang proseso ng ating pagtutukos. Narito si Microsoft Excel. Si Microsoft Excel ay maaaring makagawa ng mga formulas upang mapadali ang ating pagtutuos. Si Microsoft Excel din ang kadalasang ginagamit sa paaralan at maging sa malalaking kumpanya upang makapagtuos ng malalaking datos. Narito ang halimbawa ng isang Microsoft Excel noong 2007. May iba't ibang bersyon ng Microsoft Excel kada taon ng pag-develop nito. Narito ang isang video clip upang magturo sa atin kung paano nga ba gamitin ang Microsoft Excel. Handa na ba ang lahat upang malaman? In our first lesson, I'll introduce you to the structure of Excel Sheets. We will learn more about each of the elements that you see on the screen. The top part of the Excel screen is called the ribbon. It is the strip of buttons and icons located above the work area. The ribbon has a number of tabs, such as Home, Insert, Page Layout, etc. Each tab contains relevant commands depending on the type of action that you would like to carry out. Below the ribbon, we have the workspace area. As you can see, Excel sheets are composed of multiple cells and contain many rows and columns. The letters from A to Z are used in order to make the various columns. The first one is A, while the second one is B, and so on. An Excel sheet contains 16,384 columns. That's a lot, right? We have a very similar thing with rows. Every row is identified by a number. We have 1, 2, 3, going all the way down to 1,048,576. To sum up, 16,384 columns and 1,048,576 rows. I'm sure you understand how powerful the program is by this point. And this is just one sheet. We can add as many sheets as we like by using the Insert Worksheet button. We can work contemporaneously on multiple sheets too. I'll show you how it's done a little later. 
So, in order to add a new sheet, we can use the Insert Sheet button. What if we want to delete a sheet? If that's the case, I can click on it with the right mouse button and select Delete Sheet. It is very easy to trace cells in Excel, thanks to the way sheets are organized. Every cell's coordinates are given by the letter and number corresponding to the column and row where it lies. So for example, the first letter in the worksheet is A1, given that it lies at the intersection of column A and row number 1. The only part of Excel's layouts that we haven't yet discussed are these two bars right here. This is the name box, and this here is the formula bar. The name box shows the name of the active cell where we are at. For example, I can select a different cell, and its coordinates will be displayed in the name box. See what I mean? The formula bar allows us to edit or enter information – numbers, text, formulas – within a given cell. It allows us to visualize the formulas or the content of a cell. The formula bar is really useful when we start typing Excel functions, too. Once you start typing, it displays suggestions of functions that you might be looking for. We will start learning more about Excel functions later on in the course. But for now, this will do. Thanks for watching. Narinig ba kayong mabuti? Kung gayon, ay tayo nang dumako sa iba pang bahagi ng ating pagsusuri. Productivity Tools Ito ay isang software application na nakatoon sa paggawa ng informasyon. Ang mga halimbawa nito ay documents, Worksheets, Database, Charts, Graphs, Digital Painting, and Digital Video. Ang Productivity Tool ay mayroong word processing na kayang lumikha ng mga charts at tables. Meron din itong Electronic Spreadsheet Tool na kayang mag-sort and filter ng mga data. Ang Electronic Spreadsheet Tool ay binubuo ng mga hanay ng numerical data at ito ay isang tool upang matulungan na pag-aralan at suriin o tuusin ang numerical na impormasyon. Joanna Marie Manyo, Nag-uulat! In other news, the Philippine Information and Communications Department downplays concerns on foreign ownership in the telecommunications sector. The agency assures the public there are provisions in the Amendment Public Service Act that will prevent the abuse of the measure. These include giving the president the power to stop any investment if there are connections with a state-owned enterprise in the interest of national security. Acting ICT Secretary Emmanuel Cainteek adds the agency is committed to protecting Filipinos from cybersecurity risks. Under the Amendment Public Service Act, foreigners can now fully own businesses in key sectors like telecommunications and airlines as part of government's efforts to further open up the Philippine economy. Key interest rates in the Philippines kept unchanged by monetary authorities despite rising fuel and commodity prices. The Philippine Central Bank maintaining its key overnight reverse repurchase facility at a historic low of 2%. Interest rates on overnight deposit and lending facilities likewise kept at 1.5% and 2.5%. The BSP's key interest rate has not been changed since November 2020 as the Central Bank committed to supporting economic recovery despite upticks in inflation. But the central bank did revise its inflation forecast for the year upwards to 4.3 percent from 3.7 due to rising prices of Dubai crude, which is the benchmark for the country's oil prices. At 4.3 percent, that's already exceeding government's target range of 2 to 4 percent. Public utility drivers are calling on the Philippine government to immediately release their fuel subsidies as another oil price hike looms next week. We have more from Alvin El Chico. 
Taxi drivers are asking government to already release the fuel card that will help cushion the impact of the series of oil price spikes. Tricycle drivers are also pressing government to fulfill its promise of 6,500 pesos in fuel subsidy. Sana po may bigay na po yung ayuda 65 para sa mga driver. Para sa ating mga driver. At kawawa naman po kami lahat eh. Some bus drivers have no idea if they are included in the fuel subsidy program, but they insist drivers and conductors also need help now. Malapit na pasukan eh, enroll na naman ang mga bata. Siyempre, makakadagdag sa amin yun. So kailangan nyo? Kailangan po namin yun. Delivery riders are also becoming impatient in waiting for assistance. But as drivers wait, fuel prices are likely to go up again next week as international prices consistently went up for the third straight day. The government says it is doing its best to fast-track the release of fuel cards to drivers who have franchise. Sa buses po, nagsimula na tayo sa UV, TNVS, at saka sa taxi. Yun ho ang pinaprocess po natin for card production sa kasalukuyan. So hopefully po, makapag-distribute na rin po ang land bank in the coming weeks. The LTFRB is also waiting for the list of qualified tricycle drivers and delivery riders from other government agencies. Kasi nga po, like the tricycles and delivery service, it's outside the jurisdiction of LTFRB. We are awaiting for the list for tricycles coming from the ILG Puyan and for the delivery service coming from the IPO. Meanwhile, the Agriculture Department has already started giving out 3,000 pesos worth of fuel cards to farmers and fishermen in Tacloban and Zambales. Alvin El Chico, ABS-CBN News. Joanna Marie Manyo, you can call me Glum Yum.